Yo, what it is, YouTube? It's your boy Nitsa so coming back with another buzz out of a tutorial here today. I got a little favorite one I want to talk about here, a little secret that I've been using lately, something I feel like helps make rap's vocals golden and helps shine, but also is an amazing tone machine, the UAD Studer A800. Now today, I wanted to just speak about some different ways that I use tape, some ways that I use it to create separation in a mix. So the very first thing that I want to speak about the UAD Studer tape is that it's an emulation of a tape machine, right? Which was, uh, you know, created by the same person who worked in Abbey Road, right? So also with the um, Studer tape, you have a couple of different types of tape, right? Um, and they all have different calibrations, right? So each different tape has its own different type of tape characteristics, and it also has a certain way that it will react to the uh, source material that you put into it. I feel like with the tape uh, machine, right, gain staging is very vital, right? Because back in the day with the analog, you know, the levels that people would hit um, tape machines at were a lot higher um, because it gave them a certain sound that they were going after, right? Or they would calibrate the tape machine in a certain way because it would give them a certain, um, you know, sound or vibe, de depending on the genre and the source material. There were studios that were known for having, you know, certain tape machines, you know, made a certain way or certain tape ops who, you know, people, you know, it, it was kind of like the person had to know how to, you know, align a tape machine based on the song. So it was like kind of a lost skill, which people don't really need right now. But luckily, we have this amazing plug in there can give us some of those tones. Right. So first thing I want to talk about is the tape types. You have four different tape types, all, you know, different with characteristics. Then you have the calibration. Right. Which is kind of the way you hit the tape. Right. Um, but with the uh, calibra calibration, the most important thing about it is how hard you hit the tape, right? So the good thing about tape is that people didn't have to use so much um, compression and EQ because the tape kind of already gave them that, right? So some of the things that we're chasing currently right now with our digital recordings are already inside the tape, just the way the tape handles, um, you know, frequencies, right? And with the tape, you get some compression, you get saturation, you get all of these beautiful things that makes your mix come alive, that gives harmonic density that gives um you know the density and the strength and the foundation that a lot of hit records were built on right so with the studer input and output is vital right because you can get it from being very clean right with the input or you know or even backing it down uh, to pushing it into getting a more of that tape um glue right the compression the um harmonic saturation right and the best way to deploy a plugin like this would be collectively right it, that's how you know back in the day people didn't have to use all of these things to add saturation because the equipment already gave them that right the sound of electricity literally is built into the sound of the harmonics and everything was going through the gear and the tape as well, right? So if you want to get the best, you know, full effect from this tape machine, you should open it up on every single track. Now, you don't necessarily have to do that, but that's how you would get the full collective harmonic distortion effect, right? And with the IPS, right, I'm strategic about how I go about the IPS. Sometimes if I want to make a vocal brighter, I will use something along the lines of 30 or 15 because they have better high frequency response. Usually when I want to make some separation, I will use something like 7.5 because it has a poorer high frequency response and it makes it sound darker right so i use this as a tone machine light and dark I, I use that in different ways sometimes i might make my lead vocal um dark and my background vocals bright right all of these things i'm using to change the tone and create contrast right and establish distance to the listener every time i do a song right and the amazing thing about the uh studer is that it helps you you know not have to do too much eq too much high passing and low passing because it's kind of already built into it so it's good for beginners because it gives you what you want in the end but there's less margin for error there is an infinite amount of ways to make a song sound good and an infinite amount of ways to make it sound bad so try to figure out um you know plugins and tools that maximize the number of ways you can make it sound good and minimize the number of ways you can make it sound bad let's listen to this scratch vocal that we have right here and let's play with the tape a little bit Nigga, I'm a soldier trying to forge a plan. I remember way back then when I was wildin' out them Zan. Nigga want beef, nigga want pressure. We gon' start out throwing hand. Ain't no bucking if you try to run, then we gon' catch a man. 
So let's listen to that uh, lead vocal. That's one of the artists I work with, J Mac. I will drop his um, you know, uh, socials down below. So usually I would actually bust it. You know, I would have my lead vocal bust, but this was kind of like a, a mix that we did in a hurry. So I didn't really have time to do that. And sometimes that happens as an engineer. Inspiration can come at any moment. So you better be prepared and you better be ready to be able to capture that inspiration, you know, that vibe, right? Um, Cause once it's gone, it might not come back, you know? So um, working quickly is always important. That's what the studer helps us with, right? Catching a vibe very fast. So let's listen to what we can do with the tape. I can't be a happy Christmas. I got niggas dead in the ground. I don't wanna set a till, but they keep falling. I got brothers in the cell, but I can't pay for a call. They say to my bro, I know you see me calling. I know sure that she gon' rise, so I push her away. I don't think that I can learn how to trust. Niggas snake you for a plate, that's why I pray over mom. Cause I know your mom be so full of loss. I don't wanna set a till, but they keep falling. I got brothers in the cell, but I can't pay for a call. So as you can listen, the tapes, uh, they're all speaking the same language, which is like saturation, which is kind of like English, but they all got their own little accent. They got their own different voice. They got their own nuances, right? They're kind of like uh, cars, right? Like the same model car, but they all got a different color to them. That's kind of how I see it. And maybe you should see it to make it a little bit easier for you, right? So I like the uh, GP9, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, um, you know, push it a little bit and see what it does for me. I don't wanna set a till, but they keep falling. I got brothers in the cell, but I can't pay for a call. They say to my bro, I know you see me calling. I know sure that she gon' rise, so I push her away. I don't think that I can learn how to trust. Niggas snake you for a plate, that's why I don't wanna set a till, but they keep falling. I got brothers in the cell, but I can't pay for a call. They say to my bro, I know you see me calling. I know sure that she gon' So also, you see that how tape can be an, uh, an amazing alternative to boosting EQ. Because when I was running through some of the other tape formulas, like 900, you know, you kind of heard like a bump in the low end, right? So you can use that strategically, the tape formula and also the IPS speed, right? Maybe you want to do 7.5, you want to make something have a little bit more meat. You can try to use a Studer tape, right? Because it's an excellent alternative to using boosting EQ, right? which will change the frequency balance of your vocal versus this where it's more like harmonics right so the frequency balance is still kind of the same of course it does affect it a little bit but it's just in a more natural way you know some of these eqs that we have nowadays are so direct and pinpoint which is a very good tool but you can often find you know in the beginning you can make it sound unmusical you know you can kind of make it sound weird if you have these little precise eqs doing all this stuff versus something broad and musical like the tape right so that's a good way i like to use tape and you could also make it sound brighter with 30 ips let's hear it So just think about the IPS kind of like uh, video resolution. Uh, 30 IPS is kind of like 1080p, and then uh, 15 IPS is uh, like 720. So the 30 is like clear, high def, you can see everything. But then 15 is like, you know, it's it's good quality. 15 is it's clear, it's pretty transparent. It doesn't give you as much detail as a 30. And then, you know, 7.5 is kind of like, what, is it 360p, where it's kind of like grainy and it's tough, but you can use that to your advantage, right? as an alternative to eq then we have uh you know different uh parts right here um you know like the sync head we're listening to it right now on the repro head there's different tones and different ways that you can do it I, this is not about necessarily getting in depth to the plugin but just different ways you can use it on rap vocals right as your little cheat code wow how did he make that vocal sound so bright and so present without using any uh eq how does it sound so open without using compression well here's the answer so i would like you guys to give this a try uad spark is an incredible pack Package of um, plugins, right? And the last thing, let's look at um, background vocals, the ad libs, right? I have a, a moment right here that he did, right? And let's listen to how I use the tape to make it sound rougher, right? Just the whole message of the song. Sometimes you got to make the song sound like what the person is talking about. He's talking about a rough life. He's behind this and that, everything he's going through and he's calling, all that stuff, right? So let's listen to how I was able to create a moment using texture. Another day, I'm so hurt, I wish it could have been another way. You know, this shit, this shit kicked off with, with you 
locked up. Mm. And you lose somebody, you feel like, like you could have been a savior, you could have saved them. But I know they still with me, though. They still thugging with me. They, they forever with me in my heart. I think that's all that matters. I love my niggas, dog. Merry Christmas. I can't. You lose somebody, you feel like, like you could have been a savior, you could have saved them. But. I know they still with me though, they still Sometimes you gotta make things ugly in a song, right? And not necessarily, even, that was even ugly. I, I'm using your preset lo-fi fuzz and Spark is amazing because you can just go in there with the tags and pick out something quickly. But I'm using 7.5 in this type of tape just because I love the crunch, you know? It, it just sounds like reality. He's talking about a hard life. So what I made, the music literally sound like it's hard, it's crunchy, it's just tough and rough. And you know, you gotta kind of make the tonality of the music match what the person is saying because that's what makes the listener engage with the song a little bit more. So I always try to think about that, guys. You know, I pushed the tape hard, damn near. Tape distortion we was doing right here. We pushing it, but it still sound musical versus where there's some plugins where you cannot distort into them because it's just gonna crap out but uad did an incredible job of modeling the reaction that's why we love gear because of the reaction because human beings we have reactions if you come up to somebody and you push them they're gonna be like hey they're gonna give you a reaction that's a part of the human element right versus think about some plugins where you might slam into a hard and it doesn't give you no reaction that would be like the equivalent of somebody uh you know somebody getting pushed and they kept walking you'd be like whoa well, what's up with that person they're like a robot they're weird as heck right so that's the most important thing about making music in general outside of plugins outside of any any of this equipment or anything is that you got to bring the human element into the song there is some songs where you got to make it larger than life but this ain't one of them right so you have to also be able to distinguish that and the studer is great about doing that bringing the human element the non-linearities right think about how people are you know our hearts don't always be at the same rate it's not always flat and static so why should the music be like that right if people are the ones making music why should the music be flat and we're not flat so think about that right and uh last thing right I love to use uh, that distortion technique in parallel on, you know, ad libs, background vocals, or whether it be the actual parallel compression to help create contrast, right? And the last little piece of game I'm going to give away is a little technique I've been using lately, um, and it's using the Studer in Studio Rack on a multi-band split, right? So I can just saturate my whole mix, but through different bands, kind of like what Saturn gives you, right? But with Saturn, you don't have too much control with the actual tape part like you do with the Studer. You get to pick the speed, you get to pick the calibration, how hard you hit it, the formula. You can do all of that. You can get intricate and get in there. I haven't necessarily perfected this technique yet. It's worked on a couple of songs, right? Just setting the crossovers, multi-band frequency on the two bus, and just saturating multi-band saturating with tape on the uh, mix but you know i got this idea from uh, ozone so that's what you guys got to also do that's my last bit of game today sometimes when you see a plugin you can say hi huh, that's interesting how that plugin is doing that let me take that idea and put it into another plugin right so that's something that you can do always expand your creativity don't let anybody tell you that you can only use something a certain way you are free you are an artist you know don't ever limit yourself art is about freedom and expression and there's no limits to what we can do as people 